Yo, 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 it's your boy Timmy Lee Glean, and I'm coming at you with another one of these things. And um, like I said I've been on fire to just do this, so you know, I'm gonna keep on going. Consistency, but uh, so I had this topic that I, I thought about. I wrote a couple topics down, so I'm probably gonna be hitting you with double videos. Um, but um, so I had this thought, and just I really believe that. Marriage is completely hopeless if you don't include God in it. And uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. And I don't believe that this video is going to be long. It doesn't really even have to be long. Just look at the marriage statistics yourself. Um, and even with many Christians, look at the marriage statistics with those Christians. And see how many of them actually have a covenant. Because you get married and just... Getting married is just one thing, you know, but um, having a covenant is a whole nother, you know, thing that, um, I don't know. Did you get that card I put in your mailbox? Was that any of yours? No, that ain't me. You didn't know who it was? There was just a food stamp for Glenn in your driveway. I was like, who? I thought it was one of your friends or something. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't know whose it was. All right. All right, see you later. Oh yeah. Where's that? Oh yeah. Marriage without God is hopeless. Yeah, neighbor. Um, might have put a food stamp card in my uh, mailbox. But um, yeah, it's just um, it's just a wonder to come into this truth, you know, this revelation that I have. Um, just about marriage because God has put it in my heart to desire marriage. And because I desire marriage in the way that I do, uh, I open my eyes and realize if you're talking about women of the world, and no offense to women of the world, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody, but because you don't have a solid foundation in God, your mind can change in 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. Literally. Or even that man, you know, in 20 years and realize, okay, man, I want a younger woman. Like, he's 50-something years old. He's lusting after... You know, once you got God in it, you know, you're not going to be, and I mean, not just being a Christian. I mean, once you have God in the center of your marriage, it don't matter how old you get. You're going to love your wife regardless. As the scripture says, love your wife. You're not loving your wife, you know, 50 some years old and you ogling these 20 some year old women, you know. You're not loving your wife, you know, what you can't look at your wife with this, at, with that same passion or even more love than you had when you were younger. Because I believe if you're growing old with somebody, think about this, if you're growing old with somebody, shouldn't you grow in love more and more? And because we have this wicked, toxic culture with, with the adult films and things like that and how men can get ensnared in this stuff, especially, you know, like I said, 50 you know, 60 years old watching this stuff, you're looking at your wife like, you know, like, that's the one that held you down. That's the one that helped raise your children, help, you know, help you build whatever you got going on. And, um, just to treat her like that is terrible. <laughs> you know, marriage without God is hopeless. You gotta think of just the, the state of the modern woman, you know, and, not even being able to have headship, not being able to be led by a man, and that doesn't mean mm, dictator, mm, my man. Like, no, it just means that man should be the head. Man should be the one because of our logic minds and the way that we think. We should be the one behind the final decision behind things, and that doesn't mean we don't take our wives' counsels. And I'm not saying our like I'm I'm, I'm not married. I don't think I'm married. I'm just a single father, of three children, and kind of have the insight on raising children and what I need. I know. <laughs> you know, and um, I could just see certain things, you know, just about a woman that would help me. Um, I know that the way a woman thinks, you know, like that can help a man truly if she's in her right mind, and that's a that's that's a God fearing woman. And if she's not a God fearing woman, or if he's not a God fearing man, it's always going to be something. There's always going to be some sort of weird wedge in between, you know. So. If I could give you some sort of words of wisdom, like I said, you know, bad company, you know, promotes bad manners. And I'm, look at me butchering scriptures again. 
you know, but I'm gonna put the scripture in there so you'll be able to see the scripture so <laughs> so you can read it yourself. Like I said, I'm gonna get better with knowing scriptures like where I can you know certain scriptures I do know by heart, but it's not pertaining to the subject, but I'm going I'm gonna get there. <laughs> All I know is I got the spirit of God in me and it got me flowing like ooh, like <laughs> But ultimately, you know, this is the truth that I give you. If you're, if you plan on being married, or if you want to be married, desire marriage, as I said, I've said it in, in, in some other videos already in some of my other topics. Be celibate and, and focus on God. And I would say stop watching adult films. And I would say, I say stop doing that, that weird stuff by yourself. And focus on God and get God involved in your life. And understand that, man, you got to put Jesus as the head of your life, you know. And a woman has to understand that as, as, as Christ submitted to the Father and the man submits to Christ, woman, you submit to man. That's, that's, that's scripture, you know. And if you can't fall under that divine order as a woman, you're not worthy of being a wife. <laughs> not to say it like that. Because there's many wives, like I said... You might feel euphoric love for a man in five years, but ten years you might change once you have children. Or once, you, once your body starts changing, you feel different about yourself. And maybe he loves you and you don't love yourself. And Stuff always changes and now you want to separate because of irreconcilable differences. Or you want to get outside validation from your husband. And your husband might think you're the most beautiful thing in the world still. You might have gained 50 pounds and he still loves you. You know, but you don't love yourself so you can't even accept you know the compliments you can't eat but you can accept anything for somebody else from anybody else you know and if you're a woman in the workforce and you got your work boo your work husband and this is a real thing in marriage i remember the last job i worked at wives straight up wives i seen flirting with dudes <laughs> you know <laughs> straight up wives husbands flirting with other co -work. like this stuff real you got men working overtime, double time, triple time just to get away from their wife. You got wives taking vacations with their friends, knowing what they doing on these vacations, knowing that they got other escapades and other like, no nah, man, like if if you want to have a true marriage with husband and wife, you you want God in the center of that. You want a, a, a God fearing covenant. You want a God fearing man and a God fearing woman that comes together, or else it's not going to last. And you tell me who lasted without the grace of God. And even if you don't believe in God, you know, there's people that are equally yoked that comes from different cultures. And different cultures that have principles that, that have them stick together. So it ain't just God can bring things together even if you don't believe in him. You know, God does that for people. There's other people, other cultures. Like I said, you're equally yoked in your beliefs and, and, your, and, and you're following your cultures or whatever God that you believe in. They come together and they can last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. They can have because it's purpose behind having families. And some people just get that. You know, a woman is going to stay home and raise her children. A man is going to go out and work for his family and, and, and set up an inheritance for them. So... It's like everybody gets these principles, and we got it messed up in America. And the black community, ha the black community has it the worst. You know, so ultimately, if I can be somebody used to speak this life into you, and if you desire a husband, a wife, I say be celibate. Stop all that other stuff, the adult films and all this stuff by yourself and, and focus on God and, and, and get to know God and, and get to know Jesus and just have that relationship and trust and believe. You're going to attract. You're going to attract a, a husband. You're going to attract the wife. But it takes dedicating yourself to God, seeking his kingdom and righteousness and trusting that all things will be added. But without God, it is hopeless. And this is why men are walking away. This is why men are going their own way. This is my men are done. Because they're tired of the women in this society. They are tired of women of the world. They are tired. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you a bit of wisdom, woman. Don't be like these women of the world if you want a husband. If you desire a husband. And most women are going to desire some sort of companionship. And you can live the thought life all you want. That ain't going to lead to no man. But you're going to live the thought life until you find a good man. That ain't going to lead to marriage. 
and you men you could chase these fantastic women or you could live the fantastic life yes so you whoremongering man you are not going to discover a, a virtuous wife a good wife a wife that's going to do you good for all your days if you out here messing with these other women because a good woman is going to see the type of woman that you deal with a woman with her head straight a woman that fears God, she gonna be able to smell it on you when you watching them films. This is why you gotta cut all that out and just focus on God solely. And trust and believe that you can have a, a, a great covenant that can last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Well, I'm not gonna say 80 years like people gonna live that long, but if you and your... If you 18, there's two 18 year olds and, 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 and you hear what I'm talking about and you, you, you believe in God, you 16 years old, get married at 18. Don't worry about the world, don't worry about society, don't worry about college. Get married at 18 years old. If, and I know it's a young person out there. They're probably 16 and 15 years old and, 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 and you both are Christians, you both are God fearing. Get married at, at, at 19 and 18. If you are mature, if you're spiritually mature as a young man, get, 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 at, Learn the word, teach it to her. Have counsel, have 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 adults, you know, like have accountability. Go out, get to know each other, you know, or if you already know each other, then it's just like once you're old enough to marry, marry. Get started. And you could last 60 years. If you put God in the center of it though. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this because somebody needs to hear this, but especially you young people. I mean, the people under 18. Because this wicked, evil culture is being pushed on you. Especially you teenagers. This evil, wicked culture is being pushed on you. And you need to hear this message right now. Marriage is hopeless. Boys and girls, listen to me. Hopeless without God. All right. Ultimately, I hope that I said something that could spark in your spirit and... And that you can receive in the spirit and he who have ears to hear, let him hear. He who have eyes to see, let him see. Have the discernment in the spirit to be able to see who's right for you and who's not right for you. But if you know God, God going to give you that clarity. God going to give you that Holy Spirit discernment. You're going to have the gift, gifts of the spirit to, to flow inside of you, emanating through you. You're going to have that, that light of Christ inside of you. And that's just going to deflect the wrong type of people once you got that light of Christ inside of you. Once you got the word of God is buried deep down inside and it's getting sown into good soil, you're gonna you're gonna deflect all the wrong stuff already in the spirit. So you're gonna be able to see this stuff. But ultimately, if you want the right and correct type of marriage, you gotta get God involved. You gotta have a covenant. Forget just a, a marriage certificate. Forget just the the, the the contract. No, you want a covenant. And if you're gonna have the contract with somebody that has a covenant, then go and do so. And I suggest to sign a prenup. <laughs> but if you got God in the center of it, you don't need a prenup. But I'm just saying for your safety, <laughs> I don't want to put any wrong ideas in nobody's heads because a lot of people are against prenups. But if if this is a woman that will submit, she she won't mind no prenup and she won't even get offended at a prenup. Trust and believe. But ultimately, uh, may the Holy Spirit be with you and God bless.